So dear colleagues, so we are sorry we had some technical um, issue. Now we can start and uh, please, uh, Dr. Gutkin, uh, you are very welcome to start your lecture. Hey. Thank you. Yes, so we can hear you and so please share your screen. Just a moment, please. Yes, we see it perfectly. Okay, that's fine. So oh, hello everybody. So ladies and gentlemen, the title of my talk is Micromechanics of Mesquite Press Relaxation in Core Shell Nanowire Series Long Prismatic Course of Square Cross Section. And you see here the authors of this talk. The first is Andrei Smirnov, Dr. Andrei Smirnov from the Itmo University, St. Petersburg, and Stanislav Krasnitsky, also from the Itmo University and from the Institute for Problems in Mechanical engineering and I also from both these institutions. So I will start with a small motivation. And here you can see some principal types of composite nanowires. Uh, for today, there are very uh, big variety of such nanowires and uh, the general ac uh, count of these publications on the nanowires is uh, more than 100,000. Uh, uh, papers and uh, you will see here only some uh, <coughs> composite nanowires. And we will speak about uh, core shell nanowires, which are composed of cores. This is the material which is inside of the tubes and shell, which is namely tube of another material. And the general problem for all these uh, heterostructures are the very high misfit strains caused by the difference in the crystalline lattice and in coefficients of thermal expansion. It mainly, of course, by lattice misfit. And uh, here you see just one example. This is indium arsenide and gallium arsenide for Solanavis uh, grown by a molecular beam epitaxy method by a research group by Papus Biro from Haifa, Israel. I chosen this uh, slide because uh, they prepared the structures specially to investigate the ways of relaxation of this misfit stress and strains and to study the defects which provide this relaxation. Here you see the general view on this nanovirus and this is the a view from the top on one nanowire, you see here the core region and some shell around. And this is a general view on the top. And here you can see some, uh, some uh, peculiarities of uh, microscopic contrast at the interface between the core and the shell, which certify the presence of misfit defects. And in this case, the defects are misfit dislocations, so-called lomer dislocations, which uh, occupy the position just at the interface and relax in part, at least in part, the strained state in this system. So for today, there are some theoretical models for mechanisms of uh, misfit stress relaxation. We uh, see here some uh, sketches concerning each mechanism and uh, the references to the authors and uh, to the magazines of the papers. And uh, for today, there are some defects on the study, but the generic problem in these uh, models are that uh, the authors have considered only the final state of the relaxation when the misfit dislocation or misfit dislocation loop are only already formed around of the core, but they did not consider the way of this formation. And also you see here that all the models contain cylindrical cores with no edges and also cylindrical shells. But in reality, of course, all this uh, structure are crystalline and therefore they suffered from facing. Here you can see some example of facing of nanowires and of the cores. For example, here you see some images obtained in scanning electron microscopy of 
these nanowires with triangular and hexagonal pasting. Right, and here you see another example uh, oxide of uh, stannum, of stannum and of titanium nanowires. Here inside uh, this is a oxide of stannum. This is a black uh, image. And you will see that the cross section is practically square with rather uh, strict edges. And around is all, almost a circular shell. And here you see some uh, model, atomic model of this structure. And also here you can see another example. These are not uh, nanowires, but nanoparticles, but also core shell nanoparticles, which are composed of cores and of shells. The first photo we see only initial cores, and after that we see some cores covered by shells of thin thickness and larger thickness and very large thickness. And starting from some uh, thickness, we see also some specific microscopic contrast, which tell us that uh, there is some sort of defects inside. Here you see the contrast is mainly homogeneous, but here we see some strict inhomogeneities. And when we consider these uh, systems under transmission electron microscopic of high resolution, of atomic resolution, we see what are these defects. When the thickness of the shell is very thin, is very small, it's one nanometer, there is no defect at the interface. But when this thickness uh, is uh, three nanometers and five nanometers, we see here so-called staking folds. These are defects which are well known for in material science. They are created by the motion of partial dislocations, crystalline dislocations, which are originated somewhere here, maybe from the surface, maybe from some uh, points inside of this uh, particle and propagates through the crystal. And when partial dislocation propagates, they create the staking fold, the planar defect, which uh, has its own high energy. <clears throat> and here also you see here some staking folds and uh, some dislocations. And the problem is how to judge about the source of this uh, dislocation. What are the ways of relaxation? This is a problem to explain, at least to explain these images. So in a theoretical description of the conditions for the formation of misfit dislocations in core shell nanowires, they commonly do not take into account first the mechanism of misfit dislocation generation and the corresponding energy barriers which accompany this generation. And also they do not take into account the Pasting, of course, and nanowires and the stress concentrator and concentration at the edges. In our, in the present work, we take into account the mechanisms of misfit dislocation generation and the corresponding energy barriers. And also we take into account the facetting of course and the stress concentration at the edges. I will pass to models. And the first model is the coherent state of the nanowire. Here you see the cross section of this nanowire, which is composed of square, a square core and a circular shell. They are created from different materials, but it's assumed that the elastic properties are the same. In this case, the solution is uh, analytical. You can find it and we did this. And uh, this solution, yeah, and here we have no misfit dislocations at all. This is a so-called cohesion state, which means that the crystalline lattice pass through the interface smoothly. There's no some jumps or some defects. And in this case, the level of elastic strains and stresses are the highest. And uh, the solution is composed of two terms, of the stress field of this inclusion in the in infinite elastic medium and some additional extra term which uh, obeys the satisfaction of uh, boundary condition on the free surface of the nanowire. Here, these uh, solutions are given in uh, uh, 
cylindrical coordinate system, and this is why they're a bit more complicated than in Cartesian coordinate systems, for example. You can see some uh, denotations used in these formulas. And here you see the analytical solution for this extra term. And this uh, problem was rather complicated. It was solved by Stanislav Krasnitsky in the course of preparation of his PhD thesis. And uh, he obtained this solution in two forms, in the early analytical form, which is given here, and also in the, the form of infinite series, which are more useful in some case when we try to operate mathematically with this solution. I will take uh, both these forms of the solution. And the first, uh, what we can do is uh, the space maps. Here, the tensor of this or inside this cylinder is given in uh, Cartesian coordinates, and therefore we see here the shear stress, which is concentrated, is it uh, could be predicted at the edge of the core, right? Here we see some singular points and this logarithmic singularity, which of course may be eliminated by using, for example, a gradient theory. Of elasticity, but uh, we will not concentrate on this point. But uh, we can say that uh, this point is very good for generation of misfit defect because the level of the stresses are very high, and also it's high on the surface somewhere here. You can estimate this by using this uh, value, this uh, constant coefficient in the solution. This one C. Right, so it's approximately G shear modulus multiplied the, uh, by misfit parameter, which uh, has a sense of eigenstrain is maybe about one or two or three or four percent and divided approximately by 10. And uh, we can estimate the level, it's very high. And therefore we can expect the generation of defects somewhere in this region. And also we see here the map for normal stress distribution. And the highest level is somewhere here. So we also can uh, expect the generation of, for, for example, H dislocation, which can be nucleated here and uh, climb to the interface. All these scenarios are shown here schematically. Here we see some ways of relaxation this is a glide of partial dislocations. In this case, they create these tails, baby tails, which uh, denote the staking faults. And here are perfect dislocations, perfect edge dislocations. And these uh, dashed lines are just uh, demonstrate the path of these dislocations. In reality, here we have the ideal crystalline lattice with no special effects inside. And this is a dislocation generated by climb from the free surface. This is the one way, generation from the free surface. And another way is the generation by the edge of this curve. In this case, we can generate dislocation dipoles, one dislocation glide along the interface and occupy some equilibrium position at this interface, while the other one glide into the shell and may occupy some equilibrium position or emerge at the, inter at the surface. And the same is for the dipole of perfect dislocation. And uh, so our aim is uh, to classify this mechanism and to choose what is uh, more expectable from this. And we will do by using the energy approach, we will calculate the energy of the system due to dislocation generation. Here there are some slides concerning the calculations. I will drop there because the lack of time. Here we calculated the self energy of the defect, the energies of uh, the interaction with the misfit strains field of the system, and also core energies of these defects, and uh, also the energy of the second pole. All this uh, was done analytically, and the same is for dislocation dipole. Also, uh, some calculations here. We can see the results which were obtained for 
the exam exemplary case of gold palladium core shell nanowires treated from metals. So here we see some material parameters, lattice parameters, misfit value 4.6 percent, Jurgis reactor magnitudes for partial and perfect dislocations for sun ratios. They are very close. That's why we use one zero point four <coughs> value. And sure, moduli are also very close to each other. So we took thirty GPA for them. They assume to be equal because this difference is very small, uh, namely for these problems. And also we have some uh, information about staking fault energy. These are given here. Here you can see the references from which they were taken. And here we see the case when um, the dislocations are generated from the free surface by glide. The glide of partial mystery dislocation and the glide of perfect mystery dislocation. So we can compare the energy change which accompanies this uh, generation. And we see that the generation of perfect misfit dislocation is needs much higher energy barrier to pass to overcome to be generated. The uh, barrier energy bars for partial misfit dislocations are much smaller. And also we can see here the equilibrium points for this dislocation, this minima on these curves as corresponds to the equilibrium position of these dislocations at the interface. And these plots were constructed for different values of the radius of the nanowire from five nanometers to 50 or 50 nanometers. You see that the energy barriers are approximately the same, but of course the energy gain caused by the <coughs> dislocation generation becomes bigger and bigger with the growth of the size. In the second case, when uh, the edge of the core emits a dislocation dipole, we have two variables, which means the position of one dislocation with respect to the edge and the position of the other dislocation with respect to this edge. So we have two variables, P1 and P2. In this case, it's uh, more practical to use uh, the energy maps, the energy maps or the 3D energy plots. And these energy maps were constructed also for different uh, values of the nanowire radius. For example, for five nanometers, we have almost everywhere we see the positive value for the energy change, which means that uh, the generation of dislocations by this way is not preferable. Uh, so this means that the system prefers to remain in coherent state with no defects. But if, uh, a couple of minutes more. Okay, I will pass through. Anyway, by this analysis, we can analyze different situations with uh, dipoles of partial and perfect dislocations and consider the ways of uh, relaxation and uh, determine the points of equilibrium for these dislocations. And here, for example, there is a comparison of two energy maps for these sizes of the system, which demonstrate a big difference between the partial and perfect dislocations. For example, partial dislocation has an equilibrium position somewhere around the, the edge, while perfect dif uh, dislocations, one comes to the surface and one, another one stays at the interface in the middle. And after that, we analyzed the values of these energy buyers for different scenarios. We see here these two scenarios for this uh, generation of dislocations dipoles. They give the smaller energy buyers for different values of the system size and also for different ratio of the size of the cross uh, size of the core and the shell. We see that uh, this. Uh, a relationship is practically the same that dislocation dipoles remains the more preferable ways of stress relaxation. Okay, I will come to conclusions. So just we have considered different mechanisms of misfit stress relaxation in core shell nanowires with the core in the shape of a long square prism as follows. 
glide of partial peripheral dislocations and clamp of peripheral dislocations from the shell surface, and emission of gliding dipoles of partial or perfect dislocations from the core edge. It is shown that in the model gold palladium nanowire, the emission of dislocation dipoles by the core edge is energetically more preferable than the generation of individual dislocations from the shell surface. The emission of dipoles of partial dislocations is more preferable than the emissions of dipoles of perfect dislocations in relatively thin nanowires and backwards in relatively thick nanowires. And the optimal or equilibrium positions of misfit dislocations at the core shell interface have been found in studies in detail. And it has shown that the optimal position of the perfect misfit dislocation does not depend on the nanowire geometry. If the perfect misfit dislocation is generated, it must always be at the center of the core face. In contrast, the optimal position of the partial misfit dislocation depends on both the stake and fault energy and nanowire geometry. In the model gold, palladium nanowire, the partial misfit dislocation must always be closer to the center of the core face, but never can reach. The thicker are the nanowires and the, its shell, the closer to the center of the core face must be the partial misfit dislocation. So if you want to see some details of our calculations and results, I uh, address you to our paper of uh, like, uh, last year. In Acta Materialia. And thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> Dr. Bukin, thank you very much for a very interesting lecture. I have several questions myself, but I will pass the word to the audience. We have time for only one short question, please. Uh, okay. uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for your presentation. And uh, only one question. So you can see that uh, individual dislocations and uh, uh, what is uh, in reality, what is the typical dislocation density uh, when uh, it reaches its maximum at the interface? I agree. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the question is that uh, in this nano wires, uh, they are very small in size. We uh -huh. cannot speak about densities. We can they calculate. <laughs> they okay. normally in the cross section, it may be up to some dozen of dislocations at the interface. If we consider the length of the nano wires, we can, of course, uh, have some equilibrium densities, approximately one dislocation loop per 10 nanometer. It's very high. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So, Dr. Gutkin, thank you again. And, um, okay, uh, I will stop, right? Yes. Okay. So, you. we welcome our next speaker, Mr. Nasetkin. Извините, почему на сеткин Горбиков должен говорить чем? Горбиков должен говорить. I don't know. The, the next speaker is uh, Andrei Nasyepkin. <clears throat> so, uh -huh. Some days later, uh, <clears throat> okay, I have some results about the operation of uh, here because the camera will sh uh, show you here. Okay. Okay. This is good. Yes. About uh, UV calculation of the full set of uh, effective property of uh, porous uh, piezodynamics materials uh, with uh, no deformer 
finalization of pieza keramics by the sum algorithm uh, and the finding the element approach. So, uh, this is the first I use and think about is the ethics materials and uh, some property of course is the keramics uh, and uh, how we can prepare the effective uh, model of piezo effect composite with different connectivity, with different uh, inner structure. Uh, and uh, also, I use the finite element approach with finite element that is special compose. Uh, this is no commercial uh, finite element package uh, developers in the university. And so uh, we can calculate this effective models by the uh, for example, or another finite element package. Uh, and uh, how we can calculate the, the informational spiralization of uh, piezo exit matrix surround uh, year to the core or infusion with uh, other property. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, I have materials. These materials these, uh, uh, these usually in practical this linear coupling between mechanical and the electrical fields. Uh, so uh, this uh, electroelastic is electric, electrophobus is electric. Yes, I have materials. These are anisotropic materials uh, because. Uh, Piezo effect effects exist uh, only in materials with uh, non symmetrical property. Uh, and uh, also, uh, typical uh, use uh, piezo dynamics is homogeneous uh, spiralization. Homogeneous so spiralization. But uh, if uh, we study uh, and uh, use the uh, Yes, the climate is uh, with four or infusion. Uh, the matrix is uh, not uh, the homogeneous property, and uh, we can create uh, the homogeneous property in a finite approach. So, um, <coughs> exists uh, some practical application. Uh, for example, uh, medical ultrasound, uh, <clears throat> because these uh, porous piece ceramics have uh, small impedance, uh, and so this is better for uh, correspondence uh, for uh, propagation of uh, elastic waves uh, in uh, different media, for example, in solid media and acoustical surround media. But, uh, we can see there's uh, some coefficient, uh, some uh, piezo effect. Uh, for example, thickness model is uh, the same, or the small decrease uh, reciprocity. And so this is good for um, acoustical uh, elastic application. And for example, for negative ultrasound, for example, in the type. And, uh, so, okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, for piezo electric materials, uh, this uh, is a specific equation between mechanical and uh, electrical fields. Uh, for example, for mechanical stress and strain, uh, this is a array of six components, uh, and uh, electrical uh, fields and electrical induction. And uh, uh, in this uh, consecutive equation, for example, for consecutive equation one, uh, we can see uh, that uh, in this equation uh, exists uh, the stiffness model, the piezo models, E, and uh, the dielectric permittivity. In this uh, different equivalent form of consecutive equation, uh, because uh, different patterns of mechanical and uh, electrical fields. And so on this uh, different value of uh, component model, another piezo model, uh, another vehicle connectivity, or etc. Okay, if uh, we 
find that, for example, this uh, model uh, we can recalculate uh, uh, models for another consecutive operation. Okay. Uh, in a really uh, exists a different variant of policy of the pyramids, for example, this is the tall porosity, this is the open porosity, and this uh, <coughs> uh, same noise uh, and the CC creativity uh, type, but uh, by human uh, for close porous materials and uh, porous materials, this is open porosity and, and this open porosity and open porosity. Okay, this is different materials, and uh, these materials uh, have the different uh, ethylene properties. <coughs> Another variance, uh, this is a uh, is a pyramid infusion, for example, for elastic infusion. Uh, and uh, because uh, this is uh, isotopic materials in uh, general case, uh, and this uh, this matrix of uh, elastic thickness, uh, matrix of gain of connectivity, and uh, uh, matrix C by uh, six uh, of theoretical uh, constant, theoretical model. But uh, for <coughs> usual diagrams, uh, uh, for example, diagrams and uh, simple boxes. This is a material of uh, 6 mm flexes. And so, for these materials, it exists only 10 different properties and 5 uh, elastic thickness, say, with the models, and uh, 2 directed uh, materials. Uh, and so, um, for the effective property, uh, input data. This is uh, Value of uh, coefficient of piezo climate matrix uh, and uh, some characteristic of uh, infusions of porous por uh, value of porosity, uh, size of porosity, and uh, another property. And uh, <coughs> in the results uh, for representative volume, uh, we must calculate the effective models. Uh, of uh, this uh, this material. We solve um, uh, the classical piezoelectric boundary problem, uh, but uh, with uh, this linear uh, boundary condition for displacement uh, vector and electrical potential, uh, this uh, vector and electrical potential linear depend on coordinate. Uh, and so this is constant uh, value of uh, for homogeneous materials. Uh, this is uh, elastic uh, constant state and uh, electric field. Okay, we solve uh, this problem five times with a uh, different boundary condition. Uh, one, one, and uh, Two, this is a uh, uh, tension about uh, direction x1 and x3. Uh, this problem, this is shared problem. And the uh, two problem uh, is uh, they apply the electrical fields in direction one and three. For uh, one, the first problem, we find the solution, uh, find the average stress. Uh, average the electrical fields uh, and calculate uh, uh, the effective property uh, by this approach. And uh, if we solve this five uh, problem, we can see, for example, this coefficient is uh, the same. Uh, we can calculate uh, the same results. <coughs> Okay, and uh, if uh, we solve, for example, the, tensional, uh, the problem with tensional uh, in version X2, we calculate uh, the same coefficient for uh, tensile in the perfect material. Okay, 
we use the final element at all. Uh, so this system uh, with uh, several in matrix uh, and uh, so, for example, in our finite element package is our compost uh, and this uh, different way of representative volume. For example, this is representative volume with uh, walls, velocity of infusion uh, in, uh, with different size and different property of uh, or this is the way of the representative volume for this interactivity. Um, so this is variance one C or C one models for fiber composite materials. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, what is uh, the piezo uh, materials? This is uh, we obtain the piezo materials by different uh, by different uh, technical uh, or uh, physical uh, process. Uh, Piezoelectric uh, materials, uh, this is uh, uh, in the first uh, in the step, uh, this is uh, uh, isotopic materials, and uh, this ripples uh, random, uh, and the random reaction. And uh, in macroscopic uh, topic, uh, this is the topic uh, material. But uh, if uh, we um, produce uh, the possible to uh, obtain the piece of materials, uh, we um, have uh, obtained the, the high temperature and also the Added some aerosols and uh, 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 after polarization, uh, we apply the polarization uh, in the high electrical fields, and this uh, ripples in iron paint uh, in the direction of uh, electrical field. Uh, and uh, so, in uh, uh, after this uh, series step. We obtain the piezo dynamics with a uh, property, different property in uh, polarization uh, reaction Fc and the uh, tapping well reaction Fs1 and uh, Fs2. But, but uh, <coughs> if uh, this material uh, is materials with, for example, pores or infusion uh, in uh, the such points, of piezochemical materials, this uh, different uh, direction of electrical fields, uh, and uh, um, in general, is uh, in a different value of uh, elastic thickness piezoelectric models of the electrical materials. How we can obtain the property uh, for um, this piezochemical information matrix? We solve. Uh, in the first, the electrostatic problem uh, for this representative volume, uh, we are, uh, apply the electrical fields in the direction uh, Fc, calculate for, uh, for example, if we solve this problem by finite elements, uh, method uh, in, for every finite elements, the vector of polarization. So uh, we modify the property of uh, dense piezo keramics uh, for different points uh, of uh, such uh, finite elements by uh, low this uh, transformation of uh, tensor of, uh, for example, for uh, thickness for the electric uh, models and the yes, electric models uh, and uh, calculate from this value, this value. For, uh, and for different points, uh, this is a different value of uh, 
material property. Okay, uh, we can use two variants for uh, calculate from isotopic property of species and the reactive permittivity. Uh, we can calculate uh, information errors and the property uh, of uh, this material. Okay. So uh, this is picture with theoretical uh, fields uh, for the uh, for the fields B and uh, the polarization vector. Uh, so, uh, for example, in this, you can see that uh, the blue um, vector is uh, different to uh, so different points of finite element. Uh, this is uh, one uh, wire of finite element. Okay, this is five porosity materials, and uh, you can see that the property of uh, direction of polarization is uh, highly different. Okay, and the results. Uh, we calculate these uh, five uh, foundry problems, uh, calculate the average uh, stress and the uh, theoretical induction, and uh, from the, this average value, we obtain the relative uh, models, for example, for uh, elastical stiffness. Uh, and uh, we can see that the elastic stiffness models is the uh, case uh, from porosity. But for example, uh, for uh, relative uh, uh, the effect models uh, is different for uh, homogeneous uh, materials uh, of matrix. And so also in this the, we can see that this is a different property uh, for uh, this models uh, and uh, relative direct permittivity. So um, for Precision calculation of effective uh, models. Uh, we can use uh, the representative volume with uh, different property uh, of conversion uh, and no conversion uh, material, piezoelectric matrix, piezoelectric and uh, calculate uh, the sum. Uh, different results for different variants of these models. Okay, so we very much. So, please, uh, questions? How do you change the velocity in the method? You have different velocities and you. In experiments, uh, we can exist uh, the way of porosity, this is input data, uh, and uh, the size of four. Okay, random, random, no random. Okay. <laughs> Когда мы делаем пизодиамику, мы тоже добавляем э, парообразователь. В процессе э, по, температурной обработки э, по, э, парообразователь испаряется и получается пора. Соответственно, парообразователь мы можем контролировать. Мы можем эти награды создавать одного размера, другого, приблизительно одинакового размера. Естественно, они будут э, изменяться и деформироваться, э, но общие как бы размеры, они будут нам известны. Но у нас много разных вариантов представительных объемов, в которых мы можем задавать 
либо случайное распределение, либо специальное, скажем, стрельное, чтобы поддерживалась связанность язогеологической матрицы в трех направлениях и основные размеры плод. То есть мы задаем максимальное и минимальное. Или распределение между максимальными и минимальными. Ну и программа отбрасывает эти поры. Но в каждом варианте они все разные. То есть в каждом варианте будет разное распределение неоднородной поляризации. Соответственно, будут разные результаты. И вот надо проанализировать, как бы в среднем они будут более-менее одинаковые. Но общее я еще не сказал, что э, имеется много э, экспериментов, э, где у одних экспериментаторов э, получаются, например, данные, что те замовы, там есть такой DCC, э, он э, убывает от поясности, чем больше пояса, тем убывает, а у других экспериментаторов он практически не убывает. Ну и это зависит как они объясняют от технологии процесса, это существенно влияет на производство, там не, хорошо, не полностью поляризована эта самая матрица, получается продовольство у одних одно, у других другое. Ну и вот в этих моделях мы можем как бы, вначале задавать разные данные и получать, соответственно, Результаты, которые будут вести либо к одним, либо к другим экспериментам. Вот там я показывал, что ну, я да и не привел модули. Вот как раз таки, если мы используем модели неоднородной поляризации с неоднородными значениями и не только по направлениям, но и по модулям, то они будут близки к тем экспериментам, где убывают. So uh, I guess we don't have time for more questions. So let's thank the speaker. So our next speaker is um, Mr. Nikonov. Don, is he here? Ubrez? Yeah, it's just... Mm, so, I... I guess we do not have the next speaker yet. So, um, is um, Mrs. Zavaratnyova here? Извините, организаторы, я не понимаю. Здесь Горбиков, СП. Вы это комната Д? Да, это комната Д. Так а почему здесь идет по программе комната Б? И когда мой будет доклад, вы не скажете, when, э, мой репорт, when, а, когда мой доклад? -то? Ваш Гурбик доклад как раз в комнате Б должен быть, 18-20. В комнате Б? Да. А это комната Д? Это комната Д. Дурдом какой-то, я не знаю, что вы наделали, у вас в программе совсем другое. Ну, спасибо большое. Комната Б, да? У вас доклад а. в комнате Б в 18.20. Ну, спасибо большое. Пожалуйста. Я очень не понимаю. So, okay, um, we're sorry, I guess we do not have the next speaker yet. So, we will uh, just make a little break till 15. So, 10 minutes break till the next speaker, and then we will continue. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I would like to introduce our report, uh, the phenomenon of residual stress relaxation in the cathedral particle via void formation. Okay, and uh, the similar problem uh, have been already uh, 
discussed and published in literature for a case of ecosetical and uh, uh, pentagonal uh, ecosetical particles and pentagonal viscous. In the frame of this work, uh, there is an uh, analytical expression of uh, strain energy of uh, disclination, George disclination placed in a uh, uh, spherical shell, uh, which, uh, uh, <coughs> which have been obtained by our group of scientists. Um, okay, and uh, uh, we claim to, uh, we use this solution, we employ this solution to, uh, to develop the theoretical model of uh, residual stress relaxation uh, in a, a decahedral particle. Um, okay, and um, uh, this uh, uh, right, but, uh, contains uh, uh, the brief overview of uh, experimental elevation of uh, voids in the cathedral particle, uh, the suggested theoretical model, and uh, uh, finally, in the end, uh, uh, verification of experimental result, results, of course, and uh, um, uh, of theoretical results with experimental available data. On observation of such voids. Okay, let's move on. And um, <clears throat> decahedral, uh, decahedral particles, pentagonal viscous, and decahedral particles uh, uh, as uh, the main representatives of pentagonal particles as the main representative of pentagonal particles. Uh, so are subjected to uh, residual stress, uh, residual stress state, um, and uh, 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 usually, uh, usually the elastic models used to uh, to describe this uh, uh, stress states in terms of uh, disclination concept. According to this concept. Uh, in the case of pentagonal uh, viscous and the cathedral particle, uh, <clears throat> uh, the stress states are modeled with uh, uh, partial virtual disclination, uh, disturbance uh, of uh, partial virtual disclination, uh, as well as in case of the cathedral particle, uh, the stress state is modeled uh, with uh, uh, disturbance of period disclination. And uh, uh, this uh, stress state under some condition could relax and uh, uh, for, uh, through the different mechanisms, so including void formation. And uh, uh, here I would like to look to experimental uh, observation uh, of voids of solid pentagonal viscous and uh, hollow pentagonal viscous. The authors of the work uh, make uh, uh, we can notice that uh, uh, the hollows were observed in pentagonal viscous with relatively big uh, diameter, approximately 10 micrometers. Uh, okay, and uh, 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 on the another slide, uh, I would like you, uh, I would like to demonstrate to you uh, uh, the voice in. Uh, uh, the cathedral and the cathedral particles. Uh, uh, actually, the voids were revealed uh, in the particles with the uh, uh, outer side bigger uh, than uh, one micrometer under uh, chemical itching. Uh, another example is the uh, inverse uh, faceting in uh, uh, the cathedral and the cathedral particle. Okay, also uh, the particle surface has, uh, has a, a spherical shape. Uh, <clears throat> the internal uh, surface of the void uh, have a decahedrical or icosahedrical structure, uh, which uh, uh, could prove the multiply twinning inside the particle. Okay, and the last example, uh, the voids in uh, pentagonal crystals could be produced also by uh, electron beam radiation. Uh, 
And uh, here you could see the hole in argentum particle, uh, nanoparticle, uh, actually. And uh, uh, the authors of the work noted that uh, this hole have a tendency to uh, have, a, uh, have a tendency to to shrinkage, actually. And um, uh, uh, finally, uh, the particle uh, recover. Uh, after some period of time. Okay, let's move on to the model. And uh, uh, we uh, consider uh, initially, uh, initially state of the cathedral particle uh, without uh, initially solid state of the cathedral particle uh, with the Birch disclination uh, and with the energy E1 and uh, uh, the second state uh, uh, that is uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, of all uh, the cathedral particles with the internal void um, and uh, the energy E2. Uh, the total energy change of the system can be uh, calculated uh, as a sum of two parts of two contribution the energy change of surface, uh, the surface energy change, and the elastic. Uh, uh, energy change of the system. Uh, the surface energy change could be uh, can be determined by this uh, uh, expression. Uh, gamma here is uh, the specific surface energy parameter, and uh, uh, elastic energy change of the system uh, uh, can be uh, calculated uh, as the work spending on the creation. Uh, this lineation in a spherical shape, electric energy of this uh, lineation in a uh, uh, spherical shell uh, is represented in a uh, uh, in terms of uh, power series with uh, some condition uh, defined from the boundary condition on the spherical surface. And uh, also, uh, I would like you to look on uh, this plot. Uh, energy uh, change uh, is the uh, uh, energy ratio of all the pentagonal particles to solid bars. And uh, I expect your attention that for uh, the Hakadal particles of type for, for the same uh, uh, radio okay. uh, internal and external. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Finally, uh, we calculate the total energy change of the system due to the formation of central spherical voids inside the decahedral particles along the traits of a result with this diagram. Uh, in uh, figure E8, uh, here uh, we present the uh, normalized, uh, the energy in normalized unit. Uh, and, uh, and the change in normalized unit, while in uh, the picture B, uh, we uh, give uh, the, uh, we illustrate the energy with the unit uh, uh, mega electron volt. And uh, for the case of Kukram. Okay. And uh, uh, it is seen that, uh, <clears throat> it is seen that uh, there is some uh, uh, critical radius of the Particle uh, uh, below which uh, the uh, generation of the void are energetically unparable. Uh, and uh, uh, when the particle exceeds some critical value, the uh, generation of the void uh, become uh, energetically favorable uh, and uh, the uh, void nucleus 
uh, besides the void network, uh, have a tendency to grow until it uh, gains some uh, optimal uh, optimal uh, size corresponding to the uh, minimum of energy change function. Okay, and uh, let's move on. Here we show the dependence of normalized voice optimal radius uh, on the normalized particle radius. Um, and uh, for in case of the hackadial particle, uh, the uh, normalized optimal radius is increased um, until the moment it uh, reaches some constant value. Here it's uh, approximately 0.9 uh, units. And uh, Max uh, uh, did some experimental uh, observation of uh, uh, the cathedral uh, of voice in the cathedral particle. And um, we could see uh, that uh, uh, the experimental results uh, only quantitatively uh, verified, uh, uh, only quantitatively consigned with the theoretical result. And uh, finally, uh, here, uh, I demonstrate uh, the conclusion. And uh, um, where, I, okay, the void nucleation in relatively small decacadial particles is energetically uh, unfavorable. The void formation in the decacadial particle is energetically favorable uh, when the particle radius exceeds some critical value. And the void nucleus has a tendency to grow until it gains the optimal size as opposed to corresponding to the minimum of the energy change. The optimal void radius increases with the dehacadal particle size increases until it reaches the constant value 0.9 radius in external radius of the particle. Thank you for your attention. So um, we have some time for the questions. <clears throat> this uh, individual stress uh, or not? Of course, exists. Be on the individual stress. Yield? Stress. 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 These particles, uh, the, the high level of residual stress are characterized for this that is attributed for these particles of integral symmetry, which is uh, actually uh, restricted by classical rules of crystallography, five axis, five fold uh, symmetry axis. And uh, uh, this fact induced in this particle some residual stress, uh, which is uh, actually uh, uh, illustrated on this sketch. Like you, uh, you should, you know, uh, fit this gas, and it's it doesn't use some or uh, agent strain. But uh, actually, uh, let's consider the uh, elastic uh, energy. Here on this point, uh, the void radius is uh, equal to one, and here it's a case of sin shell. You see, and you need to Sure. And uh, <clears throat> you could see that uh, with increasing of the void radius, uh, the uh, elastic energy decreases. And so we, inter uh, we think, uh, we interpret this. Uh, 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 behavior of the uh, function as uh, as uh, <laughs> as in, uh, decreasing of uh, residual stress state, the storing uh, the uh, reducing of uh, storing energy, elastic energy, caused by the Thank well, you. Any other questions? Any questions to this?
と、So, do, do online participants have any questions? No, then I will add on the regions with favorable or unfavorable. Um, so, so, we should test to avoid formation or uh, mm. uh, change of energy to do some. Bifurcation occurs, or actually, you have some metastable states. No, we don't consider any metastable state, but this curve corresponds to uh, some uh, critical value of uh, particle size uh, before it, below it, mm -hmm. below which uh, the generation is, uh, you could see, yes, or uh, approximately more than this. Uh, number uh, less than this number uh, particles with the uh, uh, radius less than this uh, <coughs> number. Uh, the generation is not in this horrible like here 100 distance uh, and uh, which is all values of uh, uh, ratio of uh, void radius to uh, particle radius. But uh, under some conditions, with some values, uh, it become a negative area, negative region, where we uh, think that, where we expect the generation of uh, void. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so much. We'll send this here again. Uh, and the next speaker is Sukuna. Um, is she online? Yes, so the next speaker is Mrs. Wutkina. Uh, please, you can begin. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Gutkina Jan. The topic of my work the dilatation line in a wedge-shaped uh, elastic body with three surfaces. Uh, core shell nanowires, due to their excellent uh, functional properties, uh, are widely used in uh, nanogator structures in, in the files uh, of photonics, electronic, and uh, optoelectronics. Uh, the slide shows uh, nanowires with different core and uh, shell facets, triangular, uh, rectangular, uh, hexagonal, and uh, uh, octagonal. The difference uh, in the parameters of the lattice of the core and the shell, uh, the coefficients of thermal uh, expansion, and uh, the shape of Setting uh, cause misfit stresses. Under uh, some condition, they can relax. Uh, this uh, leads to the appearance uh, of defects that negatively affect uh, the functional properties of nanogator structures and uh, uh, may even lead to their destruction. Uh, the following theoretical elastic models are used to uh, describe misfit stresses in uh, core shell nanowires. Uh, one, uh, axisymmetric. Within this model, the facetting shape is assumed to be uh, cylindrical. Uh, the advantage of the model lies in the simplicity of um, the analytical solution. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, what uh, such models cannot take into uh, account the real stress uh, concentration in uh, faceted nanowires. Uh, two, uh, model taken into account the effect of uh, real facetting 
of the interface on the stress state. The disadvantage is uh, what the outer surface is uh, treated uh, at cylindrical. Uh, three, the model focuses on accounting uh, for the uh, effect of the facetting of the outer surface on the uh, distribution of uh, misfit stresses. Um, problems are solved using the conformal mapping method. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, that uh, the obtained analytical expression and rather cumbersome and the numerical finite elements solution is difficult to apply uh, to the development of theoretical model. And uh, finally, four, uh, a model is proposed that takes into uh, account the local facetting of the surface due to the transition for uh, from the uh, nanowire to some wedge shaped body. Uh, this approach seems promising for describing the distribution uh, of uh, misfit stress in nanowires with faceted core and uh, shell. Uh, objectives. Obtain an analytical solution to the boundary volume problem of a theory of elasticity for a dilatation line in a elastic wedge. For this, uh, find a solution to the problem in the main space, build graphs and stress maps in the cross section of the edge and uh, uh, compare the obtained solution with the uh, from same inclusion in an infinite elastic medium. Um, consider a dilatation line uh, placed in a wedge-shaped elastic body with uh, stress-free uh, surfaces to uh, determine uh, the stress files of this defect. We introduce the air stress function uh, in uh, the form of a sum. Uh, where uh, elastic part is an analytical solution of the uh, big harmonic uh, equation in the elastic problem for the wedge, and the uh, plastic part is the particular solution which corresponds to the uh, dilatation line. Uh, the Mellon integral transform is employed to derive uh, a set of equation uh, for the air stress function. Uh, the analysis of obtained solution was done numerically by using the stress plots and the mass. Uh, consider stress dis distribution. The graphs uh, B and uh, C uh, show the fulfillment of the boundary condition on uh, free surfaces. Uh, similarly, for the case R uh, to R0, dashed curves correspond to the uh, case of an uh, infinite elastic medium without free surfaces. Uh, this slide uh, presents a graph of the dependence of the stress axial component on the health of the wedge opening angle. Uh, this slide presents uh, graphs of dependence of the actual component of stresses on the angular position of the dilatation line uh, relative to the edges of the wedge. Uh, below are the stress maps um, for some special cases. Uh, the slide shows the components of stresses for the case 180 degrees in an explicit form. Uh, we see the fulfillment of the boundary conditions on the max uh, B and C. 
uh, similar uh, formulas for the case at uh, 360 degrees, which corresponds to a flat cut. Uh, we see the fulfillment of the uh, boundary conditions on the max B and C, and a strong uh, inhomogeneity of the actual components. Uh, let us compare these cases with stress maps of a dilatation line in an uh, infinite elastic uh, medium without free surfaces. Um, it is seen that free surfaces strongly distort the stress files. Uh, the actual axial uh, components is uh, uh, identically equal to zero everywhere. Uh, expect for the point where the line is located, uh, where is uh, not uh, defined. Uh, consider a dilatation inclusion in the form of uh, an infinite cylindrical with a cross section in the form of an annular sector. To obtain the stress file of such an uh, inclusion in an infinite medium, it is uh, necessary to integrate uh, twice uh, the corresponding stress files of the dilatation line. And uh, finally, in conclusion, uh, analytical expressions are obtained in the melon space for the stress files of a dilatation line in a wedge with in an arbitrary opening angle. The inverse melon transform in analytically uh, found and the non-zero components on of the line stress tensor are explicitly written out in the case opening angle of uh, 180 degrees and 360 degrees. The found solution satisfies the equilibrium equation and boundary condition on the three surfaces of the wedge-shaped body. Uh, free surfaces strongly distort the stress file distribution. Uh, the solution obtained in this work can be used to develop theoretical models of misfit stresses in composite core shell nanowires with faceted interface and uh, shell surface. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. So please, uh, question. So do online participants have the questions? Okay, so I will ask the question. So what is uh, approximate size of, uh, of this nanowires? So what is the cross section and, and the length? And the question is regarding the is it small enough, for example, to perform a molecular dynamic simulation of, uh, um, of such problem? Did you think about it? Uh, if yes, then have you done it? Uh, if not, then why? Uh, so did you consider this approach? Janna, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for your questions. А можно на русском? Better in English, of course. Uh -huh. See if you could try to formulate this in English. Or okay, if, if it's uh, challenging, then uh, in Russian as well. Я просто не очень расслышала вопрос. Рассматривали ли вы молекулярное моделирование как один из методов решения этой задачи? Если да, то какие результаты может получили? Если нет, то почему? Нет, не рассматривали. Ну, такие работы есть, но такой, ну... Да, в данной работе мы не рассматривали такой метод.
А какие размеры вот ваших структур? Вы там показывали экспериментальные какие-то картинки? Еще раз. А, сейчас, секунду. То есть Но какой это, порядок? Это... Там какие-то нанометры или это микрометры? Да, но экспериментально это просто, чтобы показать, для чего нужна эта задача, что вот существуют такие нанопроволоки, типа ядро-оболочка, и можно смоделировать э, э, клином. Вот. Mm -hmm. То есть э, огранку. Окей. I think Peter is uh, scheduled at 15.40, so I guess, uh, yeah, well, we can wait or uh, wait. Because people who are yeah. outside. Yeah. So we have six minutes break. So, dear colleagues, let us continue our session. Um, the next speaker is uh, Mr. Zamula. Um, and please welcome. You have 20 minutes, including questions. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. My name is Yuri Zamula, and I want to present to your attention my report uh, that was done at the Center for Micro and Nano Scale Dynamics of Gist System in Bashkir State University. Liquid extracted from the Earth's interior is most often a water renewal emulsion. Water renewal emulsion is a heterogeneous system consisting of micro droplets of water dispersed in oil. Water droplets in such emulsion are surrounded by a stabilizing shell consisting of polar oil components. This shell prevents coalescence of droplets and makes oil water emulsion extremely resistant to external influences. The most common opinion about the formation of the structure of a such shell is related to the assortment of asphaltants in the interface water oil boundary. What are asphaltants? Asphaltants are high molecular components of oil, which are characterized by insolubility in n heptane and solubility in toluene. In the picture, you can see the structure of possible representation of asphaltant molecules. All measurements were made uh, with atomic force microscope, Agilent 5500FM, shown in the photographs. Feature and advantages of these models are present on the slide. Uh, the micro droplet studies were taken from a model emulsion of the type water and oil, obtained by emulsify emulsifying uh, water in asphalt and solution in a mixture of Japan and Toleo. So, Uh, one weight per, uh, percent asphalt in in heptol uh, plus 30 uh, percent water by water. Droplets of uh, water with a created shell were placed in a specially designed liquid cell filled with tetradecan. Experiments were performed for emulsion droplets of different diameters in the range from 30 to 100 uh, micrometers. Uh, the colloidal silicone cantilever without an attached ball was used as a scanning element. On the right, you can see the animation of the power spectroscopy curve. Uh, so, uh, so in our experiments, uh, we push on a droplet and get such curve, uh, like you can see in the animation. As a result of experiment uh, on non mutation of droplets, time dependencies of distance, which the scanner with the cantilever is moved, uh, and the voltage appears on the photo detector as a result of deflection of the cantilever beam were obtained. During the processing of experimental curves, only the approach section uh, was investigated from the moment uh, the cantilever began to interact with the sample. So this is from contact, all the curve 
or all the approach curve from the contact point. Uh, the coefficient for recalculation of the voltage in the deflection was determined using a curve plotted on absolutely elastic surface. So we use sub P, uh, on which the cantilever beam deflects is directly proportional to the FM scanner's displacement. Uh, in the experiment, it is assumed uh, that when a spherical sh shape drop is pressed, it uh, occurs an elliptic geometry. The cantilever annotation depth can be calculated as the difference between the scanner displacement and the cantilever deflection. This makes possible to determine the geometric parameters of the ellipsoid depending on the annotation depth. The ellipsoid parameter A uh, can be calculated from the condition that the droplet volume is unchanged. Uh, the port content provided by the cantilever manufacturer is used to calculate the deflection in the annotation force. Based on the theory of thin fields, uh, the deep dependence of the uh, effective surface tension or the pressing force the change in the ellipsoid B parameter and the drop to phase R was obtained. R was obtained. Uh, so this is the result of uh, processing the obtained data are the dependencies uh, of the effective surface tension uh, at the asphalt and shell that became boundary on time. By interpolating the curves, the effective surface tension and uh, and third, third uh, emulsion water droplets coated with a stabilizing shell was determined. That uh, the effective surface tension was 2.5 uh, million newton per meter for a droplet with a diameter of 45 microns and uh, 1.7 uh, million newton per meter for a droplet with a diameter of uh, 80 microns. So uh, the main results are as followed. You can see them on the slide. Uh, thank you for your attention. I look forward to answering your question. So any questions? Uh, dear colleague, can I give a question? Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, please, uh, uh, please. Uh, can, maybe I didn't listen. What was the oil? Uh, so uh, the emulsion uh, Which was prepared use? in a uh, solution heptan uh, with tolu, tolu, toluene. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, scanned our droplets in tetradecane. Mm -hmm. So we uh, take droplets from the uh, preparated emulsion and put it uh, in our liquid cell uh, that was with a tetra decay. Oh, okay, thank you. And one more question. Uh, for me, this work is very interesting because not long ago I was doing uh, electrocoalescence. Uh, so I'm from electrophysics department and we uh, apply high voltage on emulsion. So when water is suspended in the electric liquid, it polarizes and the droplets begin to coalesce and making bigger, bigger than gravity. So it is used uh, for cleaning the... I understand you. Uh, we, we make experiments in, in our center. So okay. And uh, as I know, uh, uh, such a report, uh, will be on this uh, conference later, um, maybe Friday, Okay, so one of the things that I want to say that uh, maybe we can, uh, so we are not doing just experiment in our lab. So uh, we're also doing simulation. And one of the problems that we had is finding the surface tension. We decided to do it using simulation. So we compared the, um, changing shape of the droplet. So maybe one of the ways to verify our model will be to use your method. So if you will find for us the surface tension and we will do it in simulation and we can somehow collaborate. So maybe I just wanted to say this. 
if we can uh, somehow after this session speak. Okay, I understand you. So uh, we, we made these experiments uh, for the same, <laughs> uh, as I understand you. Uh, how I can find you, your lab? Where are you from? Uh, we're from St. Petersburg State University. I will write you here in your chat, okay? So thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Thank you for the question. So we have time for uh, some more questions. Does anybody have some more questions? If not, then I will ask, uh, what type of cantilevers did you use? Uh, are there silicon cantilevers? And what type of system? Is it a deflection system or a tuning fork system? So we use a uh, silicon cantilever. Uh, it was colloidal probe, but we use it without uh, attached board. And uh, the second question, could you repeat it, please? Uh, yes. Um, and is it a, a laser beam deflection system or a yeah, tuning yeah. fork system? L laser mm -hmm. defle deflection system. Mm -hmm. And um, how long uh, this experiment take time? Approximately, it must be quite fast. Uh, we tried uh, different times uh, for one curve, uh, but uh, now uh, now it's about ten seconds. Ten to. 15 seconds for one curve. And uh, is it a quasi-static or uh, uh, did you also investigate the uh, effects of viscosity or can you investigate viscosity of a droplet by using this method? Um, so uh, now um, I show you results without. Uh, Finding the viscosity, but in the future we are uh, working on it. We want to get viscosity from our experiments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the yeah. next speaker, the next speaker, Shoval, will start at um, sixteen hundred in ten minutes. So we have another ten minutes break. So, um, dear colleagues, um, let us uh, uh, greet the next speaker, Shoval of Gleb. Um, he will tell about stability analysis of nanoscale service patterns. Uh, so, please, Gleb, begin. You have 20 minutes, in, including the questions. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, I'm a PhD student of St. Petersburg State University, and my PhD thesis is devoted to effect of uh, surface stress on morphological stability of solids and thin film coatings. So now I'd like to present a part of my scientific work, which is called Stability Analysis of Nanoscale Surface Patterns in ultra thin Film Coating. To begin with, uh, the development of uh, materials with uh, improved properties is an important uh, um, material science problem. Uh, the priority is given to the research of the film coatings because the great achievements uh, in uh, uh, the development and study of such structures are the key to modern uh, technological progress. However, uh, there is uh, the possibility of the failure of film use, uh, film used, for example, in uh, microelectronic devices. Uh, which is significant barrier to improving their functional properties. Uh, in study, Fluent and uh, Swish was shown that one of the main um, processes leading to the defect formation in the um, mechanism uh, is a mechanism of uh, morphological instability. Uh, the surface roughness uh, and misted stress lead to the stress concentration and cracking. The first theoretical investigation of uh, the morphological instability in solids dates back to the work of Mullins. He describes the development of uh, surface grooves at the grain boundaries of a uh, hydropole crystal. Uh, later, Azaro and Taylor show um, that uh, 
as a surface of solid uh, subjected to unique cell stress is unstable against diffusional perturbation with wavelengths larger than some critical value. The same results was also uh, independently received by Greenfield and experimentally confirmed by Tori and Balibar. Uh, there are many studies uh, extended the model of Azarotil Greenfield uh, model to describe the surface and interface morphological evolution in solids with voids, uh, microchannel, and inhomogeneous of cylindrical and spherical shape, mono and material film coaching. However, most of these works have uh, ignored the effect of uh, surface and interface elasticity assuming that uh, it's relatively small uh, in comparison with the bulk elastic behavior. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the impact of surface and interface stress becomes significant on mechanics and thermodynamics of non-destructive materials. Uh, there are different uh, approaches to consider the effect of surface elasticity, but the uh, model proposed by Gerson and Murdoch is uh, most widely used. Uh, in their model, uh, as a surface of a solid is considered as an elastic membrane of zero thickness ideally connected to the bulk phase. It's also assumed that the elastic properties of the surface and bulk phases are different. Uh, based on uh, Gerton Murdoch uh, model, a wide range of studies uh, are conducted in which the influence of surface elasticity should be taken into account. Uh, in particular, the scientific group of uh, Mikhail Grekov studied the stress state of elastic solids with a circular nano hole and inclusion, solids and film coating with undulated uh, surface and B material with uh, wavelength interface. Also, uh, we considered uh, the problem of a nanoscalar deformation on the solid surface and on the interfacial boundary of B material. Uh, in this study, we want to investigate the evolution mechanism of nanoscale relief on the ultra thin film coatings using the thermodynamics relationships and Gerton Murdoch surface elasticity model. To do it, uh, we use the following relationships uh, constitutive relations for the bulk and shape phase, generalized uh, Laplace Young law describing mechanical equilibrium at the free and interface boundaries phase occurrence condition, expression for the chemical potential, and uh, second fixed law. Uh, the model uh, of uh, ultra-thin film deposited on a substrate under plane strain condition is represented as uh, inhomogeneous elastic half plane B, which is the union of the band B1 uh, and half plane B2 with a curvilinear surface uh, S1 and uh, rectilinear interface S2. It's assumed that uh, due to the lattice mismatch between different layers, the film structure is stressed. Uh, then uh, the condition at infinity are described by formula two. Uh, in accordance with the gerson murdoch model of surface and interface elasticity, the free and interface boundaries are represented um, as uh, negligible thin layers, ideally connected to the uh, bulk faces. Uh, to describe the elastic behavior of uh, surface layer, we use simplified constitutive equations of the gerton murdoch um, zero for more theory. Uh, here, um, it's assumed that uh, the surface energy depends, uh, depends only uh, on surface strains and uh, doesn't depend on uh, displacement gradients. The elastic behavior of the bulk phases B1 and B2 is uh, related uh, by Hooke's law, uh, which is, uh, in the case of plane deformation, it takes the form 4. As a condition of uh, mechanical equilibrium is formulated in the terms of the generalized young place equation, and in the case of uh, gerson murdoch constitutive equations, can be written as formula 5. This is for the first surface and for interface. Uh, since the surface uh, interface and uh, bulk faces are assumed to be uh, coherent, as the boundary conditions are described as uh, formula 6. 
uh, it uh, assumes that uh, at every moment of time, the solid uh, is in mechanical equilibrium. However, it's not necessary in thermodynamic equilibrium. Uh, to relax the stress and um, minimize the free energy as the surface may change the shape. Um, in this work, it's assumed that the self-organization of a stressed film uh, is caused by surface diffusion. Uh, the atomic flux uh, is proportional uh, to the chemical potential, um, to the chemical potential gradient uh, along the surface. Uh, in the figure, the direction of arrow may change. Uh, the chemical potential uh, is written in form eight. Uh, here U is uh, elastic strain energy density, uh, K is uh, kappa is uh, the surface curvature and US uh, is the surface energy density. Um, after that, from the mass conservation law, we obtain the change of uh, surface uh, profile amplitude in the forms of the following evolution equations, uh, equation nine. Uh, the elastic strain energy and surface energy defined by formulas 10 and 11. Thus, uh, in order to integrate um, evolution equation, uh, we come to the problem uh, of defining the stress uh, strain state uh, of film coating. Uh, to solve uh, the problem of joint deformation of the film with the substrate, I view the approach proposed by Mikhail Grekov. I will describe it very briefly. Uh, first, uh, using the superposition principle, the solution of uh, the initial boundary value problem is represented as the sum of the uh, solution of two simpler problems. In the first problem, it's uh, considered uh, the deformation of a uh, half plane with the curved boundary. In the second problem, it's considered uh, as a deformation of a two-phase plane with a, a rectilinear um, interface. Uh, to solve these problems, uh, we use uh, small parameter methods, then using the Mohilashvili uh, representations and uh, boundary conditions, we come to Riemann-Hilbert problem on terms of a non-function. Uh, from the uh, solution of uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem. Uh, we find expression for colors of complex potentials uh, and uh, taking into account the Moschelishvili representations and uh, boundary conditions, uh, the problem is reduced to a system of linear uh, algebraic equations uh, of the Fourier coefficients of uh, unknown functions. After that, uh, we can uh, integrate the evolution equation as a solution of uh, this equation uh, gives the amplitude change with time as a function of physical and uh, geometrical parameters. Uh, and the condition of morphological stability can be written as uh, 13. Uh, when perturbation wavelength is uh, less than a critical value, the perturbation amplitude will be decreased with time. Else, uh, the perturbation amplitude will be um, increased with time. Uh, as an example, we consider a metal metal system. And we assume that the portion coefficients of the film and substrate uh, are equal. Um, this uh, simplification allows us to analyze the effect of uh, substrate through only the one parameter according to the substrate stiffness. Uh, the bulk lamy parameters uh, of the film correspond to the aluminum. To analyze the effect of surface and interface elasticity, we consider the uh, surface and interface stiffness. Uh, the surface lambda parameters um, for aluminum are obtained by molecular modeling in, in the numerical study. Um, however, the surface uh, elastic constants depend on the crystallographic orientation and some other factors. The four different values of uh, surface and interface stiffness um, are considered below. 
Here you can see the dependence of the normalized amplitude change um, of the film surface relief on the perturbation wavelengths for different parameters of the problem. Uh, the critical uh, wavelengths are found from the intersection of lines um, with abscissa. Uh, when the initial wavelength is uh, less than a critical, well, uh, critical wavelength, uh, the perturbation amplitude decreases with time and the relief is smoothed. If the initial wavelength is uh, greater than um, critical value, uh, the undulation amplitude increased this time. Uh, this slide uh, shows the distribution of the normalized chemical potential along the perturbated uh, solid surface within the one period. Um, the dashed line uh, correspond to the critical wavelengths and to demonstrate the uniform distribution of chemical potential. Red line um, correspond to wavelengths uh, less than critical value. As can be seen from the figure, the chemical potential um, has a maximum in the peak and a minimum in the volley, um, which means that uh, it's preferable for atoms to move uh, from the peaks uh, into the volley. Uh, when wavelengths are more than critical value, blue line, uh, atom uh, will diffuse towards the peak and the relief amplitude is uh, increased with time. Here you can see the dependence of critical undulation wavelengths on interface stiffness and interface residual stress. Results show that um, interface stiffness and um, interface stress don't affect um, the morphological stability of film coaching surface. We also analyzed, analyzed in detail um, uh, Half the critical mm -hmm. perturbation wavelength depends on a surface stiffness. According to surface stiffness ratio, uh, residual surface stress, uh, film thickness, and misfit stress. Based on the obtained numerical results, uh, the following conclusions are formulated. Uh, the first one is the main. Uh, it was shown that the critical wavelengths increase with uh, increasing of surface stiffness, residual surface stress, and was worse uh, when the longitudinal stress and stiffness ratio decrease. Thanks for your attention. I will be glad to answer your questions. Okay, participants, do you have any questions? Maybe uh, online participants have the questions. So no questions. Uh, okay, then I have the question uh, also, Gref, uh, uh, what is the approximate size of such uh, nano, uh, um, nano objects in real life? And uh, would do you uh, try molecular dynamics simulation methods? Uh, um. About size, uh, uh, if we talk about the film thickness, it's uh, less than uh, 100 nanometers. Uh, if we talk about uh, wavelengths, it's about um, 15 nanometers. Uh, and um, we just plan to simulate in, uh, using molecular dynamics methods. Okay, so if No questions, then we can proceed to the next speaker, um, uh, Mrs. Segumnova. Are you here? Thank you.
Ah, uh, well, actually, um, Zavarotnyeva Ekaterina, are you here? I'm here. Hello. Yes. So please, you can start your screen share and slowly begin. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Please make it full screen and you can begin. You have 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, dear colleges. Uh, the topic of my report, uh, the nonlinear dynamics uh, of disk-based MEMS Coriolis uh, vibrating gyroscope under parametric extension of uh, vibration. Uh, one of the most important the important uh, task of instrumentation uh, at the present stage uh, is the creation of a uh, micromechanical or MEMS sensor of inertial information, accelerometers uh, and uh, gyroscopes. Currently um, in microsystem technology, uh, intensive uh, development has uh, received the direction of development of Coriolis uh, vibrational MEMS uh, gyroscope operating uh, on hard Baltic acoustic waves uh, uh, gyroscopes with a volumetric uh, disc resonator. The presented CVG operates in the whole angle mechanization and uh, in the whole angle mechanization, uh, vibration energy is freely uh, transferred between uh, two orthogonal modes uh, due to the Coriolis force. Uh, which leads to precession of the vibration mode uh, relative uh, to the rotating uh, resonator. The rotation of the axis of the precession angle makes it possible uh, to measure the angle of rotation relative uh, to the inertial coordinate system. Uh, this device has the following advantages, uh, direct angle, angular output, uh, stable scaling factor, and uh, wide dynamic range. A schematic diagram of CVG with the disc resonator is shown on this slide. Uh, it consists of electrodes and elastic suspension, uh, anchor, uh, and uh, uh, a disc resonator. A uh, disc is connected uh, on a curved suspension uh, that is attached to a stationary central anchor. Then the voltage is applied uh, to the control electrodes. Uh, the ring uh, uh, begins. Uh, uh, to vibrate uh, under the action of electrostatic force, uh, a standing wave uh, uh, arises, um, uh, which uh, is attracted uh, by the reading electrodes. In the disc rotates under the action of uh, external forces, uh, the standing waves is uh, distorted, uh, and the signal about the direction of rotation is sent to the readout electrodes. When the resonator rotates, um, uh, the staging waves uh, excited uh, in the resonator begins uh, to rotate both uh, relative to the resonator and relative to the inertial space. Uh, this effect was first discovered by the British physicist Brian uh, and was named after him. Knowing the angle of rotation of the wave relative to the resonator, you can calculate it, uh, the angle of rotation uh, of the base. Uh, this slides also show the first operating mode of the resonator oscillation and some of the main physical parameters of the device under study. Uh, consider the ideal isotropic disk shown on this slide. Uh, um, Neglecting uh, centrifugal force, so we write down the kinetic energy of rotating disk. We also write down the potential energy of elastic deformation, taking into account the nonlinear relationship uh, between uh, deformation and uh, displacements. We can also write an expression for electrical energy. The electrode structure proposed was used to excite and maintain uh, the uh, desired vibration mode. Uh, the structure under study consists of uh, uh, 24 electrodes, so which are uh, uh, solar surface, and due to the symmetry of the working mode uh, for oscillations, uh, it can contains four independent uh, group uh, of electrodes located uh, symmetrically relative to the resonator. Each electrode is uh, 
position such that its surface is uh, parallel um, to the cylindrical surface of the disk. Uh, DC and AC voltage is applied to uh, each group electrodes. Together with stationary electrodes, a small disk surface area can be described by a plane parallel capacitor model. Uh, after de determining uh, the electrical energy, we can write down the Lagrangian of uh, the system. Using the hamilton strugratsky principle, we obtain two differential equations of motion in partial derivatives. The classical approach uh, to the study uh, and construction of uh, discrete models at CVG uh, is to use the Ritz method. We assume that the resonator displacement function uh, are the product of um, agent eigenfunctions of stationary resonator, which we will uh, determine uh, later, uh, by the required time function. Uh, we can get a system which uh, respect to only functions at C and S. Uh, let's uh, let's see how the degree of uh, its nonlinearity change with a change in the parameters. The slide shows the dependence of the coefficient before cubic nonlinearity on the constant components of the electric voltage. When the uh, critical value of the voltage is reached, uh, the value of coefficient becomes equal to zero, and therefore, by optimal selection of the voltage one can get rid of the cubic term in the equation. The slide shows the dependence of the coefficient in front of the cubic term on the ratio of the inner and outer radiuses of the disk. With the decrease in the thickness of the disk, the coefficient of cubic nonlinearity becomes larger and with an increase in the thickness of the disk tends to zero. Uh, so, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, an important stage uh, in the uh, preparation of uh, mathematical models of such system uh, is to solve the problem of finding the natural frequencies and uh, forms of uh, uh, basic vibration uh, of uh, hollow disk resonator in plane. Differential equations were obtained to find the natural frequency and modes of vibration of the disk. The equations, together with the boundary condition, uh, represent a boundary value problem. To solve such problem, uh, you can use the numerical method of the of integrating equations in the MATLAB package. The slides show a graph of frequency versus disk thickness, and uh, with a small thickness, the disk become becomes a ring, uh, and uh, when the solution uh, agrees uh, well with the well-known solution obtained for the ring uh, resonators. The slide also shows the uh, disk uh, eigenfunctions for different value uh, of the outer uh, radius. Uh, uh, let uh, us now consider the uh, spectral problem for a disk resonator on a rotating base. Uh, we will study the effect of gyroscopic splitting on the basic uh, of a discrete model. The resulting system is a system of two linear oscillation with uh, gyroscopic coupling. Uh, the new frequency of such a system will be cut um, out uh, by the formula presented uh, on the slide. Uh, as you can see from the formula, frequency splitting uh, occurs. The slides show the dependence uh, on the deviation of uh, the frequency of the rotating disk on the frequency of the stationary resonator, on the value uh, of the angular velocity of the resonator. We can also compare with the formula obtained for ring resonator. Uh, we see uh, for when the thickness of the uh, disk uh, decreases, the results uh, uh, agree quite uh, well for a wide range of uh, uh, angular velocity. Uh, consider free oscillations of the resonator. The system was investigated by the krylov bogolubov average method. The following equations uh, were obtained in slow variables. The slides show a comparison of direct numerical integration of the uh, complete system and to the system in slow variables. Um, it is um, a 
convenient uh, to trace the behavior of the resonator um, trajectory using toroidal coordinates uh, in the fast uh, uh, space called the orbital elements. Having performed the change of variables and uh, making the necessary transformation, uh, we obtained the system in terms of the new slow variables. The variables uh, uh, K and uh, R uh, are the semi-axis of the ellipse. Uh, theta uh, is uh, the angle of uh, inclination of the semi-axis uh, of the ellipse to the C-axis. Tau defines uh, the position of the point of the uh, trajectory uh, at the initial time. As a spec, analysis of the expression show uh, that the rate of precession of the wave uh, pattern of oscillations is proportional to the angular velocity of the base with the scale factor and uh, uh, is also proportional to the angular momentum. Uh, this error is uh, present uh, in uh, all gyroscope that uh, implement the idea for the uh, for uh, oscillator. Uh, uh, now let us consider the dynamic of the resonator with parametric uh, extension uh, of oscillation. Consider a linear model uh, and uh, by solving uh, this um, uh, linear equation uh, by method of multiple scales. So we can construct the transition course uh, that is uh, find the region of parametric resonance. Uh, the slide shows the transition course for different values uh, of the DC and uh, IC voltage component. This uh, means uh, that we can find areas of uh, stable motion uh, for a nonlinear system. Uh, in the uh, absence of uh, rotation, uh, there will be no standing waves precision. Uh, since the disk has two uh, orthogonal natural uh, shapes uh, corresponding uh, to the one natural frequency, only one of the uh, shapes uh, uh, will be excited uh, uh, in this mode. By tuning the opti optimal initial conditions, the system degenerates uh, into one equation. By solving the resulting equation by the method of multiple scales, uh, we can teach the system on slow amplitude and fast variables. For the resulting system, you can construct the frequency response. Equating the right-hand side to zero, we can find an expression for the steady state amplitude and phase. The slide shows the dependence of the uh, steady state oscillation amplitude of the resonator of the external frequency uh, at fixed values uh, of the variable and constants uh, components uh, at the electrodes. Uh, dotted line, um, lines uh, indicate unstable uh, branches. Uh, let's go back uh, to the original equations uh, using the method of multiple scales. Uh, again, uh, similar to the previous case, uh, uh, we can write down the solution in first approximation and obtain the system in slow variables. The advantage of this system uh, is that it requires uh, much less time for numerical integration, uh, which means uh, that it greatly simplifies uh, the analysis of uh, such uh, systems. Uh, the slides show uh, a comparison of direct numerical integration of a complete non-renal system and integration of the system in slow variables. Uh, let us investigate the complete system by the krylov bogolubov average method. Uh, the resulting system in slow variables is not presented here explicitly uh, because uh, of its uh, large uh, size. Uh, due to the angular velocity, a staging wave precision appearance, uh, which means uh, that the amplitude of steady state oscillations um, is not a uh, constant, uh, but um, uh, periodically uh, change with time. Uh, such a, a regime for the resulting uh, system uh, is a, a limit circle. Uh, the period of such uh, limit circle is the period of their uh, staging uh, wave uh, precision. Uh, 
uh, using the parameter continuation method um, in the MatQuant software package, uh, we are dependent of the standing wave precision frequency on the angular velocity is plotted. The slide also shows the precision frequency of uh, uh, free oscillations uh, of the resonator um, in the um, absence uh, of a quadrature error. We obtained uh, this expression a little earlier using the orbital uh, elements. Uh, it, it can be seen from the graph uh, that the precision frequency of the wave uh, pattern of uh, free oscillation is quite close to the precision frequency of uh, uh, parametric extension, uh, but the dependencies uh, do not uh, completely uh, coincide. Uh, similarly, the obtained uh, dependence of the precision frequency of the magnitude of the constant uh, voltage. Uh, as can be seen from the figure with uh, an uh, increase the, if the uh, constant voltage acting uh, on the resonator, the precision frequency of the wave uh, pattern decreases. And uh, with a, a decrease in the voltage uh, as expected uh, tends to the precision frequency of uh, free oscillations. Uh, uh, dependence of um, the uh, precession frequency of the magnitude of the uh, uh, variable uh, voltage. Uh, uh, as can be seen from the figure with uh, an increase the variable voltage acting on the resonator, the precision frequency of the wave pattern decreases and with uh, uh, decreasing uh, voltage, uh, it uh, tends to the precision uh, frequency of a free oscillation of the resonator. Uh, so uh, from the analysis of uh, these results uh, obtained, uh, uh, it can be calculated uh, the uh, parametric uh, extension of resonator oscillation uh, uh, noticeably uh, affects uh, their precision uh, standing wave. Uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, the report presents a mathematical model of um, an CVG with a disk resonator, then in linear dynamics of the system is investigated uh, in the region of the main parametric resonance. Uh, for the specific parameters um, of the possible design uh, of the CVG, the starting uh, voltages were uh, estimated. Uh, resonance cores um, of the resonator are constructed. Uh, the stability of the found uh, stationary solutions uh, is uh, investigated. Uh, the proposed uh, dynamics model of uh, uh, this uh, CVG will be used in the future to develop algorithms uh, for performing uh, calibration tests of the sensor uh, in the presence of uh, material and uh, geometric uh, imperfections. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, speaker. Um, thank you for good timing. Um, uh, we have some time for questions, please. You know, questions from live audience. Um, do online audience have some questions? So no questions from online audience, then I will ask the question. Um, Usually, it sounds like the question where uh, the person just did not listen to the talk and uh, just want to make some. This is not the case now because this is a very interesting system, and you presented a very uh, interesting uh, mathematical analysis. So, but my question is, uh, what uh, is the technological application of the sensor? Uh, uh, what is the size of the sensor can be used in, uh, in a mobile device, like in a smartphone or for, for 
Which uh, technological applications this center can use? Uh, technological application in uh, um, very large uh, um, because it's uh, uh, one minute. Uh, Um, uh, I think uh, this device uh, can be used uh, in uh, uh, military industry and uh, um, something uh, other uh, many uh, areas. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to the next speaker. <clears throat> Moscow Nadezhda, are you here? Or, uh, sorry for spelling Mashgova, I'm sorry. Nadezhda Mashgova will be here in just in uh, several seconds. Uh, uh, sorry for some delay. Perfect, perfect. Take your time, we are waiting. Thank you. I'm very sorry there is a technical delay. Uh, we will be ready just in several seconds, unfortunately. Please, uh, it, it will be subtracted from our time. Okay, uh, don't worry. Okay. Take your time. Thank you. You're waiting. Hello everyone. Uh, sorry. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we, we see you. Please make it full screen. And actually, we are on time because we started a couple of minutes earlier. So don't worry. And uh, please, uh, you can begin. Okay. Hello, I would like to submit my work on the topic. Uh, nonlinear dynamics of family prostatic chondroitis. Nadezhda, can you please, uh, because we see your uh, presenter screen. Uh... One second. Yes, and uh, in the options, завершить режим доклад, а скрыть режим докладчика. Can I uh, just like this without full screen? Нижнем правом углу у вас полный экран. 
щелкните на полный экран в нижнем правом углу. Там, где багровая полоса рядом с движком идет. Да, я нажимаю, ничего не происходит. А вы можете попробовать опять нажать полный экран? Там был скрыть режим докладчика, по-моему, не попробовали? Вот здесь, да, в опциях скрыть режим докладчика. Нет? Okay. Uh, okay. See? Let us proceed like this. Okay. Hello again. I would like to submit my work on the topic nonlinear dynamics of an electrostatic on drive with a variable gap. Uh, my work uh, is devoted to the study of an electrostatic drive, which is a structural element of wireless national navigation sensors, which are microelectromechanical systems. The field of application of men's devices is extensive and include many areas of human life. You can see examples on this slide. Uh, any men's sensors uh, include a sensing element, uh, a system of elastic suspensions, Uh, and uh, a system for exciting installations and sends a signal by means of electrostatic, piezoelectric, magnetic, or thermal interactions. This work is devoted to a certain type of operation execution systems based on electrostatic interaction. Uh, electrostatic actuation is the most commonly used method because it is easy to implement and uh, Uh, it is uh, compatible with the uh, complementary metal oxide semiconducting circuits. This type of actuation of uh, MEM systems uh, is based on the repulsive force between plates uh, with electric charges uh, of different things, sign and can be divided into two subtypes uh, with uh, variable gap and with variable area. As this uh, photographs uh, of these types. Uh, in my work, a variable gap, gap drive we was investigated. The advantages of variable gap actuators uh, lies in the magnitude of the electrostatic force. When the gap changes, it is much, much greater. Um, the electrostatic force. Um, is uh, calculated using this formula uh, due to the nonlinearity of the dependence of electrostatic force on the displacement of the mobile electrode, it is necessary to use asymptotic methods. The task uh, is to analyze the nonlinear dynamics of the following systems. Uh, turning to the dimensionless parameters present, presented on the slide on the left, Uh, the equation of motion of the actuator will be obtained in dimensions form. The next step is to decompose the displacement function uh, into a static deflection and a dynamic addition to it. Uh, static deflection under the action of time and dependent voltages components uh, is found from the static equilibrium equation. Uh, this. Uh, after Substituting the expansion for the static deviation and the dynamical addition, uh, an equation for the dynamical addition Xc will be obtained. In this equation, on the right hand side, Xc is in a denom denominator, and in order to apply synthetic methods, this must be avoided. Two options are possible here multiply by the denom denominator of the right hand side or expand the given fraction in a Taylor series in terms of function C. We have considered both options. Um, of the top, at the top of the slide, the variant with uh, multiplication by the denominator on the right side is considered, and at the bottom um, side uh, with the expansion in the Taylor series. In the process of deriving the equations, one more change of time variable was made in both versions Uh, in order to obtain the frequency of the linear part of the equation equal to one for easier of application of the multi-scale method. Uh, the red boxes show the final equations with coefficient C as expressions for which you can also see on the slide. Uh, further to apply the um, 
method of many scales, a small parameter epsilon was introduced. Uh, actually, fuzzy the method of many scales was applied and the systems of equation in small variables were obtained. I'm sorry. Uh, and, uh, um, and these equations in small variables were verified by comparing the result of integration obtained for systems of equation in small variables and the original ones. Uh, when integrating numerically, it is necessary to set certain numerical values for all parameters. Uh, on the, uh, and these parameters' values uh, present in the table on the slide. Uh, on the left, um, you can see verification results. Uh, and uh, on this graph, uh, we can see that uh, amplitude uh, obtained by the slow variable equation are uh, smaller than in uh, um, original equation. Uh, but um, um, at this uh, voltage uh, that ensures displacement equals to one third of the gap, the error does not exceed uh, 3%. And it is concluded that both method can be applied in future. I'm sorry, but it uh, was an uh, animation in my presentation. Um, um, below, uh, the result of approximation of static deflection function depending on parameter uh, lambda dc, you can see this. Um, uh, it's necessary because uh, all system parameters must be expressed uh, through active parameters. Active parameters are voltages, constant and variable, and uh, sigma one, uh, it's a frequency distance. Um, all, all the parameters must be expressed through these active parameters to apply a continuation method in future. Um, on the left uh, side, uh, you can see dependence of static deflection via static voltages with different values uh, of cubic nonlinearity cut three in dimensions and dimensional form. Um, okay. Next, um, um, the amplitude frequency characteristics were plotted for various values of parameters uh, VDC and VAC. In the absence of cubic suspensions nonlinearity, uh, which makes the system more rigid and tilts the frequency response to the right, nonlinearity now in the system is present only during the nonlinear electrostatic force. It's known that this kind of nonlinearity reduces the rigidity of the system, uh, named spin softening, and the frequency response and the influence of electrostatic forces tilts to the left, which is observed in the figures. Uh, also, the graphs show a clear dependence of the resonant frequency of the device on the voltage VDC, with an increasing uh, the constant voltage parameter as the frequency decrease. Uh, this effect, effect can be used to adjust the resonant frequency to the desired val values for specific applications. For example, in this work, um, a model of a two-mass, dual-mass LL-type gyroscope is proposed in which the drive system is a comp electrostatic drive with variable area, but the, an electrostatic drive with variable gap is also used to adjust the resonant frequency along the sensitivity axis closer to its natural frequency along the drive axis to ensure the required difference between, between frequencies in case of uh, temperature disturbances. Um, now the frequency response is presented uh, uh, in the presence of cubic nonlinearity and their obvious difference is an inclination of the frequency response to the right due to the addition of a cubic component of the rig rigidity of the elastic suspensions with increased rigidity of the system. Our conclusion of the two methods of deriving the equation 
uh, that's multipliable by denominator dash line and Taylor series solid line um, shows that uh, uh, characteristic of similarity uh, obtained by different methods. Um, is a continuation of the solution by the parameter uh, VAC is considered that uh, is as a result, the frequency force characteristics of the systems will be obtained with different variations of the remaining parameters VDC and sigma one for two systems. Uh, amplitude force characteristics of the system's equations are considered taking into account uh, the cubic nonlinearity for k3 equal 0.09. Uh, two above graphs show a significant significant difference in the dependencies obtained when deriving the equation using the Taylor series expansion and multiplication by the denominator. In this case, the tool for verifying the correctness of constructing the amplitude force characteristics is a numerical integration of the original equation for the selected parameters. Thus, it is possible to compare the point on the amplitude force characteristic graph this point uh, with the steady state oscillation amplitude at the given parameters obtained from the slow ground, which is the result of numerical integration. For verification, the point on this graph was selected where VDC equal 0 0.1 uh, and VSC equal to 2.5. The result of numerical integration for a given set of parameters are presented here. Uh, this graph clearly shows that uh, the discrepancy between the result of integrating the system and slow variables obtained by uh, multiplying the denominator uh, with the result of integration, uh, the original equation. Uh, and um, uh, further in this work, only the method using the expansion of the electrostatic function in the tail series will be used. Uh, next step in this work is to study the dependence of uh, the reson resonance point, which describes the desired operating mode of the electrostatic drive on the values of the voltage parameter, uh, parameters VAC and VDC from, uh, from a technical point of view, where they can talking about changing the bifurcation point of the fault type uh, named limit point by the frequency determining parameter when increasing or decreasing to other active parameter. Um, figure on the slide uh, shows a series of frequency response of the system for different values of VAC parameter. The red dotted line in this figure shows the change uh, in the bifurcation point around sigma 1 uh, when VAC increases. It should be noted that uh, when moving along this curve, not only the value of the frequency determinant changes, but also the amplitude of the oscillations too. Uh, therefore, having to see the graphs of the amplitude and frequency changes from the active parameter VAC and VDC, it will be possible to draw a conclusion about the values of the control voltages that required to provide oscillations with the required amplitude and at a known frequency, which is the main goal and task of this work. Um, here you can see figures that show the dependence of the resonant frequency and resonant amplitude uh, with changing parameter VAC. Uh, this dependence has a limiting value in the region near zero according to the parameter VAC after which it changes its character of growth. This effect is due to the fact that not for all values of active parameters, the four type bifurcation point will be observed on the frequency response. Since at low voltage values, the frequency response function is uh, unambiguous and uh, does not have an unstable branch. Uh, in this connection with the continuation of the bifurcation Point, no solutions are observed in this area. Uh, and the same effect uh, is observed upon continuation with respect to the parameter VDC. In this area, no the solutions. Um, 
Uh, here's the last step uh, of this work uh, is realized. Uh, it's taking into account the influence of the second stationary electrode in the cone drive on the dynamic of the systems. I'll consider a model of uh, an electrostatic variable gap drive consisting of a movable and two fixed electrodes with gaps D1 and D2 between them, shown in the figure on the slide. And the slide shows also modifications in the equation of motion for the variant with the expansion of the fraction in the Taylor series. And uh, you can see in your approximation of the static displacement function also. Uh, and the uh, following uh, graphs shows the dependencies of the amplitude frequency characteristics and amplitude uh, force characteristics. Uh, uh, with, uh, with taking into account the influence of the second stationary electrode. And also uh, sh uh, this graph shows the dependence of resonant point of the bifurcation on the voltage parameters uh, with and without uh, influence of the second stationary electrode. The general conclusion here is that the amplitude of oscillations when the second stationary electrode is taken into account becomes smaller. And when modeling some such systems, it is um, imperative to take this factor into account. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, speaker. So um, we have some time for questions. Are there any questions? Um, probably the online participants have the questions. So uh, then I will ask a question and uh, which devices uh, such uh, uh, a comp drive is used? I've probably uh, missed it at the beginning of the lecture. Um, you ask uh, which devices used this uh, comp drive, right? Yes, yes, this, this object. Uh, this... Uh, Com drive is used in uh, various uh, inertial sensors like uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, do we have here uh, Anton Nikonov? Is he here? Anton uh, is not here. Okay, so um, the participants, I would like to thank you for participation in this uh, section. Uh, I think we had very interesting talks and fruitful discussions. Uh, and then let me, on behalf of the chairperson, close this session and thank all the participants again. Goodbye. So, um, actually, we have now a coffee break, and there are there will be some lectures after the coffee break at uh, seventeen hundred twenty. Uh, so, see you after the coffee break. So, uh, dear participants, we continue our lecture uh, session, and please welcome the speaker, uh, Laban of Svetaslav, um, modeling of the structure evolution electroelastic material. Uh, you're welcome to begin. You have 20 minutes. Thank you.
it's my name is Lavana Stefan, I'm staying here with you know, my uh, work, my of the main structure, evolution of periodic for elastic materials, and the monotonic, and cycling the world. Well, I here restructure my presentation. I'll start with some motivational remarks on the white study verification and uh, general modern approaches uh, for theory electric materials. Then some theoretical um, details, the introduction of the chromatical model that we use, the classification of boundary value problem and the domain classification the compatibility condition. And then two results, actually the domain well motion model and the creativity, the com compatible domain structures model and the electric hysteresis dependence on microstructure. Uh, so, the electrics is the subclass of the electric, which is used in quite a wide variety of um, application uh, as piezo elements, as uh, the reactive uh, elements, and sometimes as nonlinear ferroelectric as well, as in the ferroelectric random access memory. Um, there might be different approaches to the model of uh, ferroelectric, so from the macromechanical, like uh, control theory, like a composite theory, uh, to the phenomenological models for the ceramics level, and then micromechanic models for grains, and uh, even, even more complicated state field models for the mains, or even molecular dynamics for the crystal lattice. But in uh, this uh, particular work, uh, our goal was to uh, see if um, we can um, we can model the domain's motion and some domain patterns using the micromechanical approach, which is a bit simpler than phase two models. Uh, so domains, are, I guess, we know that domain is the area that has the same spontaneous polarization and deformation. Uh, they can be found uh, on the images of the uh, ferroelectric materials, such as uh, the baroxanator presented on the left part of the slide, and uh, in some other materials like uh, shape memory materials as well, presented on the right side of the slide. We go back to those domain structure a little bit further. And uh, now I should uh, introduce the micromechanical model, which is based on the studies made by uh, Huber, Black, Landis, McMichin, and uh, other scientists in the end of 90s and at the beginning of the 21st century. And uh, it was improved and uh, adopted for finite element um, implementation into the uh, Pantacrata package uh, by Simon uh, later. So the main idea is that if we have the tetragonal, uh, tetragonal ferroelectric under the Curie temperature, as for example, for baroxanate, it has the, the six spontaneous, uh, spontaneous direction of polarization. So we can say that in the um, we can um, write the constitutive equation as um, if we uh, have the uh, we have six domains with six directions, which are defined by the volume fraction. C is is the volume fraction. Uh, so we can write the uh, constitutive equations for the whole material, uh, the stress and the, the electric displacement <clears throat> vector as they averaged by those six domains mm, and in nearly the same equation that was in the uh, piece, uh, uh, report about the electricity, but here we introduce the remnant part of uh, strain and uh, electric displacement polarization, which is nonlinear. And for those random parts, we have the evolution equations where we can do averaging by the number of domains or number of switching systems. Switching system is like switching from one direction to another. And if we have six uh, domains, then we have 30 switching systems. And the F alpha with dot, the function that uh, corresponds to the rate of the switching, is introduced by analogy, by analogy with crystal plasticity. So that G alpha is the driving force. It's an energy term which has uh, three parts, the mechanical, the electrical, and the one corresponding to the change in the electrical, in the electric modulus uh, while switching. And uh, 
as you see, is the cost stiff uh, driving force, so a constant, which is in case we have purely, uh, say, purely electrical loading, it really picture the uh, electric field, the amplitude of electric field when the switching occurs. And C zero is the is the initial uh, initial uh, volume fraction of each domain. And um, um, in the our previous studies, we always uh, said the C zero is for uh, equal to one over n, which is one over six for the trigonal phase. Uh, just like as we have the same amount of uh, all the six domains in the material. And then we study it, uh, study the change in volume fraction of uh, the uh, domains as the uh, electric solution occurs. Uh, and it was the basic micromechanical model for us. But then we decided that uh, we can, uh, when in finite element formulation, we can uh, do some areas uh, in which we will have the uh, only one C zero equal to one. So in, and it will be like the domain in the real material. So we have the area with all, all, all polarized, pre-polarized, but in the one direction or in the other direction. So we can do some, uh, some more complicated structures, but it will be a little bit further. Now, just by that, uh, we have the uh, basic model and uh, we achieved some good uh, results with uh, for both single crystal and polycrystal uh, ceramics and um, um, here are some results uh, with parameters that can be achieved that the modeling results are close to experimental uh, yeah uh, same as that uh, part that the c0 is one over n uh, the um, Interesting result that we achieved was the really uh, prediction of uh, domain wall motion. So let's have a look at the systems. We could have the uh, two volumes. Uh, they are like two domains, but in the initial state, they both have the um, volume fraction equal to the one over n. So they both have all the six directions in them. And then we, we preload them. The upper volume is preload in Z direction. The lower volume is pre-polarized in X direction, as seen on the graphics for the uh, external field. And then the boss are uh, loaded in X direction. And what we see on this gif is the part of, um, so yeah, is uh, on this uh, part. So we're loading the both prepolarized pre volumes in X direction. And we see that the um, elements in upper volume start to switch into X direction. And it looks like the, there is a domain wall diagonal, uh, the 90 degrees domain wall, and it moves upward. And it's mm, like a mm, very cool result that with such a simple uh, model, we achieved uh, this domain wall motion. So, uh, regarding the um, uh, different patterns in the works by Huber, so uh, other authors, uh, the uh, compatible domain configurations were proposed, uh, such as those uh, shown on the slide. Uh, some of uh, they have like a big study on this. Uh, some of them are corresponding to the like watermark or checkboard or herringbone domain structures uh, which are achieved uh, in other articles uh, in other uh, in other works in, in experimental uh, so the um, main idea of those uh, work by Huber and uh, was to uh, utilize the compatibility equations electric and mechanical compatibility uh, with the uh, account of 90 or 90 degrees or 180 degrees domain wall uh, possible to uh, to analyze and find all the possible uh, rank two uh, rank two domain patterns. Which means if we have the rank zero domain, it's uh, like only what it has like one direction. Then 
they get the rank one domain uh, here, and from those two rank domains, or rank one domains, they get the uh, rank two domain. Uh, so those uh, cubic patterns were studied, but to deal with it, we have to uh, say about boundary, boundary volume problems for um, representative volume element of uh, multi-domain crystal because those cubic structures are just an element taken from a black thin field of uh, the ferroelectrics. So the uh, main differential equations for the mechanical boundary volume problems are the static equation, the small strain assumptions, assumptions the Gauss law and the Faraday's laws, and those constitutive equations that were mentioned early in macromechanical model. Uh, that right? Yeah, yeah. Then we introduced the scalar, scalar electric potential is quite a usual concept. Um, and uh, we introduced the vector electric potential for, uh, so that the electric displacement is the minus rotor of C of vector electric potential. And thus the Gauss law is satisfied automatically. Um, it's uh, studied then why we use the vector electric potential because those, the, if we use it, then uh, the general stiffness mark, uh, matrix of the plant element uh, problem has been, uh, is uh, uh, positively defined. So it's easier to solve. And um, do we take the periodic condition uh, elements. So they are the same in two directions. Uh, the electric condition are here as well. Uh, so we took those seven uh, proposed uh, structures, the defined models of them. Here are some defined uh, elements, like characteristics, number of elements, number of nodes. And then we started them. We uh, achieved the uh, three-dimensional uh, with uh, hysteresis while while loading in three different uh, orientations of three axes. Uh, is uh, hysteresis to see that uh, the structure shows the high anisotropy, and um, it's interesting that in this uh, stage two, when the loading is uh, off. The uh, there is such a diagonal field to those of in other studies. So, for some other structures, maybe I should go quickly through them. This one is interesting because it has a strong anisotropy in both in all the three di directions. You see that some structures uh, are not uh, have. Mm, have not compensated polarization in one of the directions, such as y uh, direction and x direction in this case. Uh, so the stress start not from zero. And the other and the last one. So on this picture, we have all the stress collected together. And um, the interesting thing is then, though we applied a big amplitude, like 50 megavolts per meter, it's quite a big field. And all them structures uh, went into the saturation. But fully, they were fully saturated once, but even though they still has like the memory of the initial structure. So after saturation, they don't act the same. They have their own form of stress anyhow. Uh, and uh, on this big scale, they might look like very close to each other. Uh, but um, if have a more detailed look, we'll see that uh, and then you know like. On the upper, uh, on the upper graph, uh, here um, we see that they have different. It's all uh, only about the um, loading in z direction, loading, no, not in x direction. Uh, we see that they have a different rate of uh, saturation at the beginning, uh, switching, switching, and saturation. And uh, on one hand, on the other hand, when they are fully, they were fully separated, and then they go back. The loading is uh, taken off, and they go to the state of remnant polarization. It really uh, differs like one and a half times between the, uh, the those red and blue ones. Uh, 
And if they wouldn't, uh, they weren't saturated fully, this will defer even more, much more, of course. Um, so yeah, that's all. Like concluding remarks, uh, summing up the direct mathematical model of the domain structure evolution in a single crystal based on the fine tuning and simulation and using of the mechanical model is considered the formation and, and movement of 1980 degree domain walls in the light. Second round luminous structure of ferroelectric domain patterns in texture of granola crystal system that satisfy the compatibility condition to integrate the domain patterns reported in the literature for the barrier domains have been studied. The dielectric theory of curve for represented volume, uh, volume elements of ferroelectric domain patterns uh, been obtained, and the non linear boundary value problem were, was solved as well. The fine tuning program in the cracker is used for the solution of the fully coupled electromechanical body, the revolving problem as for the homogenization procedure. And these results of computer, uh, computational experiments allow us to reveal significant dependence of electromechanical properties, polarization, and hysteresis curves of the electric single crystals on the domain structure. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a very impressive lecture. We have some time for questions. Thank you for your presentation. If I understood you correctly, uh, you solve a couple of term electromechanical problems. Uh, does the uh, mechanical problem depend on uh, influence uh, your results? For example, young model. Uh, uh, I guess. Mm, not so much here because uh, we only take into account the uh, electrical load in, in the present work. We don't we don't apply stresses or forces, uh, and uh, if we uh, go for the situation, if those uh, compliance is uh, here, so uh, for its part, it's in between the Stress and strain. Mm -hmm. In case we have no stress, then it doesn't work. But maybe it can affect a little bit due to the uh, internal stresses uh, that can appear when those, uh, like in the uh, elements in domains, uh, like this, uh, um, if uh, they press, say, on each other. But I guess it wouldn't like mm, have do much. Here we don't we don't have the mechanical stress, but if we'll have it will work because they have the, the electric uh, the I mean, electric position. I mean, uh, electric field may affect uh, mechanical stress. Mm, well, yes, but it's like a little effect. It's not. But if you apply some external electric fields, will you have some stress? Yes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will have some stress. We can, uh, we can picture the stresses, uh, stresses field, uh, like like those are the remnant polarization fields. Uh, pictures we can picture the stress, but they will be low. Like it's, it wouldn't be no megapascals, right? It will be like don't know hundred pascals, or so on, so on. Okay. The second question is. Uh, uh, you can see that I know correctly, anisotropic material uh, is yes. anisotropic electric property. Yes. Uh, it has the anisotropic properties due to its structure. If you see, for example, this, uh, the, the simplest one, uh, in, it, in initial state, uh, those uh, uh, blue domains have the polarization in plastic direction. And those gray diamonds in minus x direction. So it has, but they have uh, and they have no polarization in y plus or minus for for that direction. So if we apply uh, field in x direction, they saturate really fast. 
so we uh, apply a little bit like what will be will be like two two megawatts megawatts per meter and the in x direction and so the structure is fully straight but in case we apply the field in z direction vertical field we have to apply like 30 megawatts megawatts so we have material. yes yes due to structure not due to model so material is from two materials. Yes, yes, it's like a, it's kind of like, a, like it's like a composite with an extra structure. So, in a certain way. So that's why you, you have done a communication problem. Yes, you yes. Have a yes, actually, quality. it was for us it was the it was the going back to the mechanical slide. It was like we used to say that c zero is equal one over n, and it's like a static approach that we have. As I said, we have six domains, but that's not the real domain seen on this uh, microscopic images. But they are like modern domains. We have all them, all them brains that have plus uh, X uh, uh, polarization. We have all, they have all gathered into one like uh, fictional domain. <laughs> and uh, uh, then the question occurs: Okay, that's uh, like we did some. Uh, start starting with this approach, but what if we will take in account the actual geometrical structure, the domain structure, and simply can we do it using utilizing our micromechanical model? No, like not introducing any more complicated theory. Yeah, I, I think uh, you can discuss it afterwards uh, <laughs> in the discussion. Thank you. I also have some questions, but I think we better move on to the next. So oh, okay. Unfortunately, yeah. we are yes. out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you again. So mm -hmm. our next talk uh, is uh, Mr. Gazaran. Is he here? Uh, yes, I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so please, uh, you're welcome to start your lecture. Um, so Mr. Gazaran, uh, numerical and experimental investigation of electrohydrodynamic flow current characteristic for different electro configurations. Please, um, you can start, you have 20 minutes, including the questions. So everything's okay. Do you see my presentation? I think. Oh yes. Yes, I see. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Albert Gazarin, and I'm a PhD student of Saint Petersburg State University. And today, I'd like to speak with you about part of my work. It is concerned to numerical and experimental investigation of EHD flows for different electrode configurations. So first of all, I will. Uh, tell you what is an EHD, electrohydrodynamic flow. Then I'll look through the experimental setup. Uh, we'll look at the current characteristics that were obtained in experiment. Then I'll show you mathematical model and the simulation results. And finally, we will compare simulation and experiment. So what is an EHD, electrohydrodynamic flow? So here is a schematic illustration of electrode system. Here is a some sharp electrode, for example, blade. And here is a plane. And here inside is a dielectric liquid, for example, oil. When we apply a high voltage, an uh, electric field appears. And due to high voltage processes, the space charge emerges. So there are main two processes. So this is why it is in different halves. So it may be dissociation when molecule under electric field is split into ions, or it may be injection. Uh, when ions appear in the metal liquid surface. And here we are dealing mostly with uh, injection. So as I said, space charge appears, it begins to move due to column force and due to collisions with neutral molecules, the whole liquid begin to move. 
And here you can see a video of experiment. So it is a blade plane and we apply high voltage and the EHD flow appears. It is a visualization with the help of air bi bubbles. And this EHD electrohydrodynamic flow has a lot of advantages. First of all, it has no moving parts. So it is silent and nothing will break. Moreover, the devices designed with the help of EHD will be very small because it's just electrode system. And even though we use a high voltage, something like kilovolts, the electric current is very, very small and the, low, the power consumption is very small. And we can easily change the HD flow just by changing the voltage. Here you can see also needle ring electrode, the visualization of EHD. We apply voltage and a very strong stream appears. It is an EHD fountain. And it is not water, it is oil. So, okay. As I've already said, we are dealing mostly with injection. So with low conductive liquids. Uh, but we want to be able to simulate EGD. So to be able to simulate injection chart formation. And to do this in simulation as a boundary condition, we need to have an injection function that describes the surface charge formation. And actually, there is no unified theoretical explanation of this injection function because uh, they differ. That's why previously in my works, I presented a method that helped to estimate this injection function by the comparison of current from experiment and simulation. And here were the, these results, the comparison will experiment and simulation. So by current, I compared and find an injection function and used to simulate the velocity. Here is the velocity in experiment and simulation for different temperatures. And they are very, uh, good in matching. But in this work today, I'm speaking about uh, versatility of injection function. So injection function is function that is dependent only on local electric field. And for example, if we will fix the metal and the liquid in one system, for example, wire plane and blade ring, if they have the same metal and the same liquid, if we find injection function for this system, it will stay the same for this. And it is very good because we can find injection function for simple systems and use it in computer simulation, change the shape of electrodes and design EGD devices. So here I'm uh, going to uh, show you how it works. So to do this, we decided to use the wire system because we can easily change the diameter of wires for different configurations. Uh, but when we have one wire, the system is giving unstable results, not in simulation. I mean, in simulation and experiment because the electric field of the wire is very uh, similar. The injection goes from the whole surface and the HD flows are unstable. Here is a simulation results and experiment we obtain the same. That is why we decided to use the system of wires. Here you can see the core section. We have here six wires and two plane. It is the simulation for ions and for velocity. And it gives stable result. And here is the experimental setup. You can see here that it has six wires. And here is the zone where the EGD flow uh, occurs. Uh, we measure current, but we not don't measure it by point by point. We measure it using the dynamical current voltage characteristics. So we apply in linear increasing and decreasing current on a system and uh, voltage on a system and measure current. We take away the capacity current and the only thing we have is the dynamical current voltage characteristics. So this is what we obtain in experiment. And here is a result for a transformer oil for a wire 100 micro, microns uh, for in different days. And as we can see, the system changes. 
and it is not very good because we want to take one electrode 100 microns and another electrode 45 microns it won't even and it is very important that the state will be the same on these electrodes so what do i mean so if we have two different systems and we have something like this going on current with time in this and this system and if in this system we will obtain the current voltage characteristics in this state and in this system in uh, this state it means that when we will try to find injection function and compare the simulation experiment we will have the discrepancy so the result what what is important we need to obtain results where the current is stable so in this area where we can be sure that our systems are in the same state. So here is the result of experimental current voltage characteristics in different time. And we can see that at first day we have some processes happening. And then on the second, the third day, it is quite stable. And the results that we have on the third day, we can take as a clean result. So as a clean current voltage characteristics. And the same for the another configuration, 35 microns, also first day, some processes, and second day, practically stable current. So, okay, now we have current voltage characteristics, and uh, here are them. And another step is to simulate it. So here is the simulation uh, mathematical model. We simulate uh, electro electrostatic set of equation, the nernst planck set of equation that describe how ions appear in our model, and nernst Navier-Stokes set of equation that describes the liquid moving. And here is the column force as a volume force acting on the liquid. We use the transformer oil with these properties and a numerical method finite element method and software package comes all multi-physics. Here is the geometry as we have a symmetry. I was doing just a quarter and injection function is a boundary condition on the wires. So here is some results. And here is the comparison of experimental and simulation current voltage characteristics for 100 microns. Uh, I estimated injection function so the current in simulation and experiment will match so here is this injection function and then this injection function i used in another configuration and here is the result the injection function obtained for 100 microns used in 35 microns give quite a good agreement something like 15 percent discrepancy but uh, we're not happy with that why it could be. Uh, here is just photos of uh, wires. Here you can see six wires and I underlined the border wire uh, without and with voltage. And due to electrostatic forces, the wires begin to push at each other and the inter-electrode gap changes. So we have not 5.5 millimeters of interelectrode gap, but smaller. And that is why the current in simulation is bigger, in experiment is bigger than in simulation. I take it into account and simulated it with uh, for five and 4.5 millimeters, and I've got a better agreement. So here you can see the, the blue curve and the red dotted curve, they have very good agreement. Uh, so in further experiments, it is very important to look at the shape of our wires to be able to take correct interelectrode gap. So to conclude, I just want to say that the math, the injection function uh, obtained for one system, if you don't change the metal and the liquid, can be used in designing. Uh, in different for different configurations uh, of your device. So thank you for your listening.
So thank you very much, Mr. Gazarian, um, for a very impressive talk. Um, does anybody have the questions? Okay, if not, then I have the question. Uh, your uh, flow which you obtained, is it, uh, is it uh, turbulent or laminar? Uh, did you have any problems with turbulence in your simulations? Uh, so can you tell me? Mm -hmm. So uh, here we have dealing with a very low Reynolds numbers. So they are much, much more smaller than 2000. Mm -hmm. So in the computer simulation, we are truly uh, sure that we can use a laminar mm -hmm. uh, simulation. Thank you there for the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does probably online participants have the questions? Actually, I understand because my work doesn't concern with the session, uh, probably. So, uh, well, well, why, why not? And uh, yeah, uh, actually, this, this is also interesting. And uh, well, this question I ask uh, um, several times, but. Uh, so this slide looks like you know already some technological applications or um, is it just the ideas? Uh, you know, uh, we were doing a startup trying to be able to commercialize the EHD devices. And uh, when I talk about disadvantages, that's un just not for scientific life. They have disadvantages. Uh, we're sure about disadvantages. But we had some problems trying to commercialize HD devices because, the, uh, for example, in cooling systems, the, their main competitors are liquid cooling systems and mechanical pumps. They are very simple and going, working very well. That is why for mass, uh, HD maybe is not very interesting. But HD devices are very interesting in use for... Uh, space and so our you, colleagues from united states are making cooling system based on ehd pumps and they are checking them on the space stations okay thank you very much again thank you thank you very much it was very interesting so now i want to thank all the participants uh, for the participation today it was very interesting uh, and so let us close the session and we are glad to see you later on, on the next sessions. Uh, take care. Goodbye.